We welcome you to our noonday Bible study. Again, it's uh, we want to give God praise and glory for allowing us to come together at this time to study His Word. Let us let's go in prayer. Father, we just come thanking you for this opportunity that you've given us to share in your word. We pray right now that our hearts and minds are open, that we that our minds are clear, that we have a desire to learn more about you through your word so that we can serve you better. Again, we just thank you for this opportunity. We give you praise and glory because you're God and, and God alone. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Amen. Uh, I'm standing in today uh, at our Bible study. Our pastor, Pastor Johnson, Donald L. Johnson, is taking a much-needed break, and uh, we just want to continue to, to uh, pray for him and thank God for him and pray that, that he can get some R and R in so that he can come back fresh and ready to continue to uh, lead us as God leads him. And I, 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 I talked to him earlier and I told him he should just put his feet up, go out, play some golf. Uh, maybe he might make a birdie or two, you never, you never know. But uh, we thank God for him and uh, we're gonna today. Uh, we're gonna look at a, a word that inspired me, and I, and I pray that it will do the same for you. And it's found in in the book of Lamentations. And we know that that Lamentations is a continuation, or it was written by the prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was was a prophet of God from his youth. And he was sent by God to tell his people of their sins and to warn them of the coming judgment. Now, uh, Jeremiah was said to uh, be a plain and rough prophet, less polite than Isaiah or some of the other prophets. We all know him as a weeping prophet because of Israel's sin and their refusal to repent. Not only did they refuse to repent, but they also had an arrogant attitude against God. And this caused Jeremiah to, to weep. And um, when you look at the book of Lamentation, we know it, it, here he's lamenting and it's a demonstrative moan, moan that, that uh, wailing like. And uh, when I was, when I was uh, looking at this, I thought about, have you, have you ever cried to the point where you couldn't stop? I, I remember growing up, man, when I would get a whooping, sometimes I would cry and, and try to stop, you know, want to get <laughs> one of those. Uh, and here, here I just pictured Jeremiah just, just crying and unable to stop crying because of the condition of Israel at this point in, in their history. Now, uh, the book of Jeremiah, the prophecy of Jeremiah, uh, was written before the siege of Judah. The siege started in, in uh, 605 B.C. and it, it continued until 584 B.C. when it was totally destroyed and that, that, that was a 19 year period. But Lamentations, the, the writing of Lamentations came after the destruction and the captivity of Judah. So when, when you look here, we see the prophecy of Jeremiah, and then we see the lamenting of Jeremiah. When you look in the book of Lamentations, there, there are five chapters. 
and chapters, chapters 1 in chapter 1 you'll read where Jeremiah mourned when he think of how the city that once flourished now lie in ruins and it, it was a result of the sin of the people and then when you read it in chapter 2 he mourned because of God's fierce anger how God had cut off the horns of Israel now you know an animal when you cut their horns off that's taking away their defense so he described Israel as having God cutting off their horns and then uh, not only did he cut off their horns but he withdrew back his hands allowing the temple and the city to be destroyed now you when you when God takes away your defense like cutting off your horns and takes away his hands then, then you you're in pretty pretty bad shape there but it, it was all because of the sins of Israel and their arrogance toward God. But if you, you go on and read in, in our Lamentations, in the fourth chapter, uh, how the, the precious uh, sons of Zion had lost their purity. And it, this referred to, to the leaders, how they, how they had gone astray. And, and how hunger caused them to become as cannibals. When you read through uh, and see the devastation that God brought upon Israel because of Israel's sin and because of their unwillingness to repent and because of their arrogance toward him, you, you'll see the great uh, devastation there. And then it goes on in, in, uh, in chapter 5, we see a, a prayer of reproach that, that Jeremiah is offering to God. And, and he said in that, in that prayer, he, he was talking about how, he said, how our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest because of our sins and the sins of our fathers. So, so when you look at when you look at, at the entire scope of book of Lamentation, you'll see in, in chapters 1 and 4 and 5, uh, 4 and 5, you'll see the devastation all around. It's like, it's like being in the middle of a desert. But then in chapter 3, right smack dab in the middle of Lamentations and, and in the middle of chapter 3 there's a ray of hope. I call it I call it uh, when, when I, I was looking at this I call it an oasis of hope because in this in entire book we see nothing but devastation, destruction and then in the midst of all that there is a ray of hope and I uh, you have to, when you read in Lamentation, you have to read it slow. If you don't, you, you'll just read right over it and won't see it. But here in chapter 3, and we're going to look at, we're going to look at a, a few verses here and to really bring out what we're talking about here. And so, so looking, at, looking at Lamentations, chapter 3, we want to start by looking at verses... 21 through I just started 21 it says this I recall to my mind therefore have I hope now we, we've seen all the devastation that, that he was writing about all the things that were taking place uh uh, with the children of Israel but then he said here in verse 24 he recall he remembered something he said therefore this I recall my mind therefore have I hope and so in, in the midst of all this devastation that he's facing he sees hope and let me let me uh, just 
pass this along to you. We are, we, we are going through some things that we've never gone through before. And people are, are, are reacting different to it. Some are angry, some are depressed, some are, are afraid. A lot of, a lot of uh, negative reactions. But in the midst of all that we go through, smack dab in the middle of what we're going through, God is showing us or uh, giving us a ray of hope and an aces of hope. It's like, like being in the desert and, and with sand everywhere you look and, and all of a sudden pops up an oasis. And that's what we see here in, in the middle of lamentation. And so here Jeremiah began here in verse uh, 21 he remembered, and he, he, it says in verse 22, it says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. And what we see here, what we actually see here, we see Jeremiah stop looking at himself. He stopped looking at his circumstances, and he started looking at God. You remember when, when Peter was on the ship and, and it was storming and he, when he saw Jesus, he asked Jesus, allow me to come to you and Jesus baited him to come. And Peter, as long as he kept his eyes on Christ, he was all right. But the minute he started looking at the storm, he started sinking. That's, that's what God is showing us here. In the midst of all we are going through, all the troubles we have, all all the circumstances that's surrounding us. And sometimes it's overwhelming. But if we keep our eyes on him, that, that's the message that he want us, want us to see here in this lesson. Keep our eyes on the Lord, regardless of what's going on. And he goes on to say, he says, because he says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. We, we, we as children of God, we are like the, the burning bush of Moses. We might burn, but we are not consumed. God, God's loving kindness keeps us. His mercy keeps us. And it says that they are new every morning. God, God don't run out of mercy. Because yesterday's mercy, he had enough. Today, every time... Every morning we get up, God's mercy is new because of his love and compassion for us. He says, he says they are new every morning. Great is our faithfulness. God is a, is a faithful God. And God is faithful. We know he's faithful. And we can stand on God's promises because God's promises are yea and amen. God, God is faithful. And so, so we, can, we can depend on him. I want to uh, talk about how, how we are, as God's people, uh, how we are like the burning bush of Moses, that we burn but we're not consumed. I want to read a couple of verses uh, uh, from uh, 2 Corinthians 4 chapter and verses 8 and 9. It says that we are troubled on every side. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And all that is because of God's mercy and grace toward us. Look, hey, hey, friend, that, that's something to shout about. When we can when we can stand on God's word, when we can stand on God's promises. Regardless of what's going on around us. You know, we, we talked about us being in the middle of, of the desert and every direction you look, you can't see anything but sand. But in the midst of that, all that sand, up pops an oasis, a ray of hope. And that's, that's what we see here in the middle of lamentation, a ray of hope that God wants us to claim and hold on to as we go through what we go through. Hey, look. 
we, we serve a mighty God. And then when, when God promises us something, hey, look, you can stand on it. And so here, here we're looking, we look at, we looking at, uh, at this, uh, these verses here that, that we just shared here. And go, go over to verse, we're going to move from verse uh, 25. To, this is Bible study, right? Okay, so we, we're going to take our Bible, and we're going to go to verse, we're going to look at a couple more verses here. We're going to look at uh, beginning with verse 38. I'm going give to you, give you time to get there. Okay. Verse 38, it, it says, now, now remember now, we are in the middle. We, we looked at chapters 1, chapters 2, chapter 4, and chapter 5. And all we could see, all, we could see Jeremiah weeping because of the condition of the people, uh, uh, of his people Israel. How they had gotten themselves into this predicament because God had sent Jeremiah to warn them if they, he, the, the, the condition was, if you repent, then I'll stay my hand. But they wouldn't listen to Jeremiah. They didn't care about repenting. And they was arrogant. Their attitude toward God was arrogant. Okay? And so in the midst of all that, all the destruction and devastation around them, God is showing them and showing us that there's always a ray of hope, an oasis for hope. Okay? So that, that can give us encourage that can put pep in our step and, and glad in our stride when we know that, that whatever we're going through, God is gonna be there for us. And so so we, we see how God's mercy, we looked at that in verse verses uh, twenty one through uh, twenty four, uh, 22, 23, I'm sorry. And we see how God, God's mercy is keeping us in the midst of what we're going through and how faithful God is toward us, okay? And, and now we look here at, uh, go over here to verse 38. It says, out of the mouth of the most high proceeds, well, let me, let me start at verse 37. It says, who is he that said, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? What, that, what, what, he, what, what Jeremiah is showing us here in these verses is that we, sh we should always put our trust in God and not man. Uh, no, no man can just say and it come to pass. Only God can do that. God spoke and everything that is came into being. Man can't do that. It said, it, uh, uh, man, we are, we are uh, when we look at this verse, verses, we'll see. That he says, out of the mouth of the Most High proceed not evil and good, Everything that happens, whether it's good or bad, God is in control of it. And, and look, you know what, you know what uh, Job said about God when his wife said, curse God and die. He said, should I always expect nothing but good from God and no evil? God knows what's going on in this world today. That, that, should, that should give us some consolation. Because when you look around, man, everything is chaotic now. But just know, whatever's going on, God is aware of it. Nothing happens without God's knowledge. And it goes on to show us here, it says, uh, it says, wherefore doeth a living man complain? A man of the punishment of his sin. Listen, listen, listen at this. 
this is, this is a quote I looked up. Now, I don't know who said it, but, but you can write this down so you can remember. When you go back and, and read Lamentations like you're going to do after Bible study, and keep this quote in mind. It says, the work of God's hand agrees with the word of God's mouth. The work of God's hand agrees with the work of God's mouth. God said it, it happens. God speaks it, it's done. The work of God's hands agrees with the word of God's mouth. And so, so here, here, you know, we, we, we are nothing but tools in the hands of God. That's what we are. The government of this world cannot accomplish anything unless God say so. So, so uh, God is in control. That's, that's what we're trying to see here. Nothing is accomplished without God's direction. So th that's why we can't put our trust in man. That's why we can't put our trust in government. We need to put our trust in the Lord. He holds, he holds everything in the palm of his hands. God does. Not you, not me, not the government. It's God. And, and look, uh, I think it's Allstate said, say you in good hand with Allstate. I, I'd rather be in God's hand than be in Allstate's hand. Because you can file a claim with Allstate and they'll cancel you. Well, that's, that's something else. We're we going to move on. Okay. And, and here it goes on. It says, uh, it says, let us, uh, no, it says, wherefore do a living man complain? A man of the punishment for his own sin. Now look, I, I, want, I want to say this right now. We may complain before God, but we can't complain about God. Why? Because all God does is loves us, cares for us, provides for us, uh, takes care of us, put his arms around, uh, protection around us. So there's nothing that we can complain about. We are in the mess we're in because of our sins. The, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's glory. There is none righteous, no, not one. The Democrats blame the Republicans. The Republicans blame the Democrats. The, it's all our fault. We are all at fault because we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. That's why we're in the mess we're in. You sin, I sin. Sin carries a penalty. In 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God will forgive our sins and cleanse us from sin, but we have to deal with the consequences. Sin carries consequences. Don't think you can sin and get away with it. You, you pay, we pay for our sins. And that's why, that's where we are. It's, it's our fault. It's our fault. And that's, this is what Jeremiah uh, was showing Israel. But they refused to look. They said, oh man, go, go. They, they tried to kill him. They, they did everything to him. Because he was telling the truth. You know, the truth is something that, that we don't really want to hear today. But, but you're going to hear today, we are all the blame. We're all to blame because of our sin. Hey, look, if it, if it wasn't for a sin, we'd still be in the Garden of Eden. It's our sins. And we're all accountable. We're all responsible. And so we can't, I can't point the finger at you, and you can't point the finger at me. Because you are as much fault as I am. And God is going to, he's told us in his word. Now, now we, remember, we're standing on his word, right? And he tells us in his word that we're going to have to pay for our sins. And so that's, that's where we are. 
We're in the midst of all this mess because of our sin. Sin's, sin has brought us here. And so, so we, need to, we need to get that in our, in our heads and our hearts that, that we're at fault. But, but God is not going to leave us there. He's going to show us Jer through Jeremiah. He's going to show us how to come out of this thing. Hey, and that's what we want, right? We want the solution. We see the, we see the problems we're having. We know we're in a mess. So, so how do we get out of it? And, and that, this is where the ray of hope comes shining through. This is where the oasis in the midst of the desert pops up. And it's found right here, we, as we continue to read, it, it's found right here in verse 40 and verse 41. Verse 40 says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. <laughs> he's, telling, he's showing us what to do. He says, search and try our ways. Hey, man, we need to step back and take a good look at ourselves. Take a good look, and, and if there's any way or any, any path that we're traveling that's not of God, we need to turn around. That's, that, that's what, that's what, it, that's what uh, this verse is talking about, repenting. And repenting is just turn away from sin and turn it back to God. That's what, Israel, that's what he, was, he was prompting Israel to do. Turn away from your sins and turn back to God, and you won't have to go through all this. And so he's telling us today, Pastor Matt, he says, he says right here in verse 40, let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let's repent. Let's be sorry for, for the sins that we've, we've done. And let us aim to walk according to the, to the word of God. That's, that's what it says. I didn't, I didn't say it. It's right here. It's right here in verse 40. All he's asking us to do is repent. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Don't be so high-minded. And, and don't be so caught up in yourself that you can't confess your sin to God. He know about them anyway. Even the ones you, you think you hid from him. He knows. And so he just, he just wants us to repent. He wants us to turn away from those things and, and turn back to him. And then, and then to cap it off, now, now we in a mess, right? We, we see ourselves in a mess. And, but we see this ray of hope that, that uh, God is showing us through Jeremiah here in the book of Lamentation. We see this oasis in the midst of the desert that's, that's going to bring us relief uh, from, from our woes. But how do we get there? He said, repent. Check yourself. Examine yourself. And you know, every time we, are, we do communion, we are, we are asked to examine ourselves. And we shouldn't wait once a month to do that. Look, if we wake up every morning and God's mercies are new, then every morning we, are, we ought to examine ourselves. And then, in verse, verse uh, 41, and I'm, I'm done when I share this with you. Repent. And verse 41 says, let us lift up our hearts with our heads unto God in the heaven. What, what are you saying? Get down on your knees, raise your hand, lay prostrate, whatever you have to do. Go to God in prayer. Look, in order for us to make it through what we go through, we're going to have to have a repenting spirit, and we're going to have to have an attitude of prayer. 
that's gonna, that's gonna keep us. That's gonna keep us. God said, if my people who are called by my name will armor themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then he makes a promise. He says, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Hey, look, we need our sins forgiven and we need our land healed. Now, look, we don't mind praying for healing, but we need to first pray for forgiveness. That, that's that's, that's going to keep us in the midst of what we're going through. And I look, this, this ray of hope, this oasis of hope that we looked at today, should, should help us in our anxiety and our frustration and, and the anger that we're showing because of what, what we're going through. It should help us and, and give us a, a new outlook on, on how to handle this thing. And if we do it God's way, God is, God is going to bless us. Why? Because he's promised us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time to share in your word. We give you praise and glory because you open it up and make it so plain and so clear to us. We love you, Lord, because you've proven time and time again that you love us. Thank you for, for showing us the way. And now, Lord, we pray for a desire to walk in what you've shown us. Let us not hear, hear the word, hear the solution to our problems and just walk away like nothing has happened. Give us a desire to, to be honest and open with you where we can come to you and lay all our burdens at your feet. You invite us to do that. And so we just, we are so grateful. We give you praise and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and praises always. Amen.